what's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com back with another Blender rendering tutorial. So in today's video we're going to talk about a few simple steps you can follow to get better renderings out of Eevee, Blender's real-time rendering engine. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing you need to think about when you're setting up a shot for Eevee is you need to think about your lighting. And in a lot of cases with an object like this one, what you want to do is you want to use a three-point lighting setup. So if you add a single light, so I'm just going to do a shift A and I'm going to add an area light and just move it over a little bit. But if you have an area light like this one, what you're going to get is you're going to get a bunch of kind of harsh shadows on the backside of your object, right? So you're going to have all of these shadows over here. And what that's going to do is that's going to make this kind of like darker, more contrasty looking shot. And so usually what you want to do instead is you want to try to use a three point lighting setup. And so you can look this up. I will link to an article on Wikipedia about this, but a three point lighting setup uses three lights instead of just one. So you have a key light which is your main light. Then you have a fill light over here that's supposed to fill in some of those shadows on the side. That's gonna be a smaller, less bright light. Then you're also gonna have a backlight. And what the backlight's gonna do is that's gonna kinda of separate your object from the background. So it's gonna add almost a glow around the outside of your object. And so what I would do in this situation is I would just come in here and I would duplicate this light and usually I think that light's going to be a little bit lower. But then it's also going to be a smaller light. And the idea for this one is notice how you're not getting all those crazy shadows in here in the background now. It's kind of like filled in. So your main light is still coming from over here. But this light, which I'm probably going to bring down a little bit, so it's not super bright. Um, your, your second light, which is your fill light, is going to fill in those shadows. And then we would create a third light over here. And so then we're gonna have our third light right here. And so now our object is better lit and it's gonna give us a better result. But there's some things that you're probably still noticing aren't very good in here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to come in here for each one of these lights and we need to enable contact shadows. So you need to select your light Go over into your lighting settings and under shadows, check the box for contact shadows. Notice how as soon as you check the box for contact shadows, you start getting more shadows in this area here as well as down below. And so basically what this is doing is this is adding some shadows in areas where parts of the mesh touch each other and it's also doing some additional calculations. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna increase the quality of your shadows and I would recommend that you go through and you do that for each one of these um, because it's gonna give you a more realistic result. So contact shadows are gonna be really important and then after that, what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to adjust some of your EV settings. So these are going to be actual render settings as opposed to something that you're changing over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our EV settings right here. And so one of the more important settings that we can turn on inside of our EV settings is ambient occlusion. And what that's going to do is that's going to give you a darker value around areas where objects touch. So notice how, for example, when I turn this on, I'm getting a darker value along the edges right here. And we might turn down our lighting just a bit. So we might put these to like, let's call it two and a half instead of four and a half, just so we can get a more pronounced ambient occlusion value in here. But notice how when we turn on the ambient occlusion, it's gonna do a better job of simulating um, those darker shadows in these nooks and crannies. So you can also turn up the quality of your render by upping your sampling. So let's say we were to jump our viewport sampling up to 64. Um, notice what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a better result with your shadows in here, but notice how it takes a little while longer. Like notice if I rotate in here, um, you can see this going through a couple different iterations to update, but this will um, improve your performance, though it will also take your rendering, it will make your rendering be a little bit slower. So another option that can be really valuable in here, especially if you have a material that's reflective, is screen space reflections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this object so that it has a material applied to it. So let's apply maybe like a blue material. And just for the sake of this, let's turn the specular up a bit and the roughness down so that it's kind of reflective like this. 
And so one thing you're going to notice is if you turn on screen space reflections in here, what that's going to do is that's going to turn on reflections based on visibility to the camera. So um, what that means is that means that for anything that the camera can see, this is going to calculate more reflections. And you're going to notice that when we turn this on, now all of a sudden inst instead of just getting reflections based on the lighting, in this scene, what I'm getting is I'm also getting reflections of the light bouncing off of the ground right here. And remember, because Eevee isn't a path tracing engine, what it's doing is it's basically approximating where the light goes. So like Cycles, for example, calculates every light bounce or as many light bounces as it can um, for your rendering. But Eevee doesn't do that. So if we turn on screen space reflections, what that's gonna do is that's gonna calculate the light bounce that's in here. In addition, you can also get a higher quality by unchecking this half res trace. So basically what this half res trace is doing is this is calculating your light bounces at half resolution. Um, but if you uncheck this, then it's gonna calculate that at full resolution. So it will negatively affect your performance because it has more that it has to do, but you will get a better result. All right, so the next tip is turning up your shadow quality. So you can turn up your shadow quality in your render settings by going down to shadows and turning your cube size up. And so if you turn up your cube size, what you're going to get is you're going to get crisper shadows in here than you would have otherwise. And so if you turn the cube size up, what it's going to do is it's going to give you higher precision and sharper shadows, where the second option you don't have to worry about unless you're using the sunlight option. But you can also check the box for high bit depth. That's also gonna give you higher quality shadows. And then there's also this option here for soft shadows. So um, if you check this, then your shadows are gonna have kind of this soft, like blended look. If you uncheck it, notice how your shadows are just gonna have this like hard edge around the outside of them. So most of the time you're gonna check the box for soft shadows. And then there's also an option for light threshold. And that's where you set the minimum amount of light for a light to contribute to the, uh, to the lighting. So if you turn this all the way to zero, then all the lights are going to contribute to this. If you drag this to the right, notice how as you turn it down, um, the lights that are further away aren't necessarily affecting your rendering anymore. So you can use this to adjust how far those lights reach. It can be more of a performance enhancer than anything else. To improve your bounced light, inside of Eevee, you can add an irradiance volume. And so an irradiance volume is an object that you can add under, um, if you do a shift A and go down to light probe and you select the option for irradiance volume, what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you a box inside of your rendering, right? So you can see this box right here. And basically this is a box in which Eevee is going to calculate bounced light. So, and so if you add this, what that irradiance volume is gonna do is that's going to basically give you a box where it's gonna do that extra calculation for your bounced light. You can see how when you select this, you can click on it right here. But what this is gonna do is this is going to calculate anything inside of the box with the dots. Um, it's gonna calculate the way that the light bounces in there. And then anything between this interior box and the exterior box, it's going to kind of fade out. So notice how if you adjust this, this is gonna give you a different fall off um, area in here. So you wanna make sure that anything where you really wanna calculate the light is inside of the box. But that irradiance volume is gonna give you more accurate light inside of your rendering. So then if we were to come in here and we were to calculate, or if we were to go ahead and render this out like this, so let's go ahead and let's render our object. We're just gonna do a render image right here. But if you compare this result to a result with just kind of the base render settings in here, and granted this is a different material, you can see how this is gonna give you a much better result inside of Eevee. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. I will link to some other videos about rendering in Blender um, up above. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.